always walking with my donkey searching for you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Megan. Thank you for the introduction, Amy. Um, thank you everybody for coming to the symposium. Thank you for being here. This is really awesome. You guys are also helping donkeys just by being here and getting more education and helping shine um, a brighter light on them. Um, so this is now officially my second presentation that I've ever done. If you were <laughs> at my Abnormal Hope one, then you would see that that was my first. This is my second. Um, and I'm excited um, to be here. So for this talk, the, the theme of the symposium is happy donkey, happy donkey. And so I was like, oh, happy donkey, happy hooves. What does that mean? We're going to be talking a little bit more about what, what, it, what it is. when. So when I'm handling donkeys, I do a lot of handling with donkeys. So some of you who see, see my videos and stuff, um, I do a lot of, um, I don't like to tie donkeys up. I like to have them have their space. I like them to be able to move around. I want to kind of talk to them and try to ease their fears, find out what's going on with them, why they're resisting hoof care. So that's really what this one is going to be about. And we are going to talk a little bit about diet again and lifestyle, and that'll be at the end. So who am I? I'm a farrier. I've been a farrier for 13, almost 14 years. And um, that picture over on the left, I still trim that donkey. That's baby Poppy. See, I can't, I can't pick her up anymore. <laughs> but that was actually uh, during my apprenticeship in 2006. So I, I had a year-long apprenticeship um, with a really great farrier in, in my area. And we trimmed a lot of donkeys. And this was a miniature. Uh, I still work. This is a saddle paw miniatures in Garberville. She had 15 donkeys at the time, so I got to work on a lot of donkeys. Um, in the middle there, that's a BLM donkey, and I'm doing that thing that I do, which it's really hard to explain, but I got the rope laid over my leg, and you can see that I have his head turned towards me, and nobody wanted to trim him because he would scoot around and just kind of be naughty when he was tied up and stuff. And I started trimming him, and this is just what I do. And then, I don't know, he was really good. And then this is um, my friend Rocco, who, this is a newer client, and he was also resisting hoof care, and he was being snubbed up tight. His face was being snubbed up tight to a post, um, and he didn't like it. And this is our second session together. The first session, I did what I did there in the middle. And then this was our second session. We are in a smaller stall. And he did hop around here and there. But um, I, think, I think he enjoyed it. And he's, he, I can now just trim him in the pasture at Liberty like that. So that's really cool. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of head over in heels in love with donkeys and have been for a long time. So. That's kind of who I am. So why do I love them? Um, they're smart. They're thoughtful. They're, they're kind and gentle. And then at the same time, they're like super brave and bold, you know. You, and they're very funny. And they have um, great emotional depth, I believe. And then I, intelligent, that's the same as smart. I doubled that up. And oh my god, they're so cute. <laughs> like, but they are. That's how I feel around them. I'm like, oh every day and I work with them like all the time and I am still super excited to be around them so they they really enrich my life from that perspective like yeah I do this work but it's like they they make me a better person okay so one of the things so I work with a lot of different clients and one of the things that will happen is I'll come to meet somebody they rescued a donkey or they just got their first donkey and they're really nervous. Or they're like, oh, I tried to put the halter on the donkey. I can't halter my donkey. I can't do these things. And their emotions are just escalated. They're, they're feeling very worried. They're afraid. They don't think they're adequate. They're like, oh my god, um, little Tinkerbell never going to get in the trailer. And I don't know what I'm going to do. And so it's important to recognize what emotions you're bringing up. Um, what, is, what emotions are you feeling when you're with your donkey? Um, and so when, what I'll do is I'll point out, I'll be like, hey, you're, you're really elevated right now, and your, your donkey's kind of going like, whoo, I don't like it. 
And so if we can become conscious and just go, whew, wow. Because that happens to me. When I go to meet a new donkey that, you know, because I could get hurt, right? I don't want to get hurt. But I can't hold on to the fear of getting hurt. So I'll be like, whew, all right, I'm feeling, I'm feeling nervous here. Let it go. I'm going to choose now to feel confident or happy or shift my emotions. Do, can you guys kind of understand that? So I say, you recognize that you're elevated and you say, listen, I'm going to choose to be calm and relaxed right now. And when you, can, when you do that, then you can become more confident. You can go, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be more confident. And those emotions and those thoughts are what transfer over into like, that's your body language. So you've been around somebody who's having a hard time and you can feel like if someone's stressed, have you ever hung out with someone who's stressed and then you're like, oh, now I'm stressed. And, and animals are even more sensitive to those thoughts and feelings and stuff that we're, ha that we're having. And so fear is another big one. And if you notice that you're feeling afraid, I encourage my clients to just let it go. And it's hard. It's not always just easy. You're not just like, oh, yeah, I'm not afraid anymore. You have to almost pretend. So, um, and I say let that go because it's OK not to know because you can learn, right? So hopefully that makes some sense. I know this is a little, maybe a little out there, but it, <laughs> here's the other thing. I want you to let go of fear. There is a healthy level of fear, but fear is not healthy when it keeps you from moving forward or from feeling confident in yourself. That's just a little side note. So I like to say that you need to let go of expectations. In, and when you let go of expectations, then you can allow what needs to come in. And so you're like, hey, I got this donkey, and I'm having some challenges with it, and I'm about to learn something new. Um, so you can replace fear with excitement. You can be like, yeah, this is awesome. I don't know anything. And uh, I'm so excited to figure this out, right? <laughs> but it can. And I'm glad that you're laughing, because that is really important. You do have to give yourself some, cut yourself some slack, have some, you know, give yourself some grace. So because you can gain the knowledge and experience that you need. That's why you're here, right? You're here to learn and to gain this new knowledge that's going to help you with your donkey. So again, I like to think of it as, as it's an adventure. I really like to have fun. So I try to put a lot of my life in a way where it's like, yeah, I'm going on an adventure. I'm going to have some fun. And, and it can still be scary. You don't know where you're going or what you're doing. So it's an adventure. Then when you get your knowledge and your experience and you're starting to build on that, you have to be super patient because you're not going to be perfect right off the bat. And you probably never really will be perfect. Um, but you can become more skilled, but that takes patience and it takes practice. You have to just practice it over and over again. You're having a hard time picking up a foot, you're just going to have to keep trying, keep trying. And then your body's going to, you're going to start getting it and it'll come to you. So also, here's, you know, Sally over here and her little donkey jumps in the trailer and goes to the hospital and picks up its feet and does all these good things. And then here's your little one. You, got, you can't compare yourself to other people or to other donkeys or to their level of skill. Just really, you know, relax and focus on practicing and being patient with yourself and what you're learning. And this, again, translates over into your emotions and your body language because then your donkey won't feel so stressed because you're more relaxed. Okay, so building trust. We hear about this a lot with donkeys. How do you build trust? I build trust with donkeys relatively quickly. The second session with Rocco, I had his halter off. He's working with me. I, I don't know this for sure, but I believe that it is our intention that is, so when I come in, so, so intention, you know, you're like, I'm gonna, like you got the donkey because you wanna care for it, because you wanna, you wanna give it a good home, you wanna take care of it. That's your intention. You can, let's see, oh, sorry guys. Oh my God. So when we consciously choose to channel a particular feeling or emotion, we can open a deeper line of communication. That is really what I believe that I'm doing when I come in 
and I'm working with the donkey. I'm like, okay, today we're going to have a really good time. I'm going to do my best to help you. And if you're not quite ready for everything I can do for you today, then we're going to formulate a game plan and I'm going to come back. And I like to, like, I go in and I give owners high fives and I'm like, you're awesome. You've got this. We're going to do this together. We're going to work as a team. And there's a lot of really great training methods out there and they are important. You, I'm gonna to come to that next. You do have to have some sort of like a shaping plan or something that you're, you're gonna do. But if your intention is to be of good service and to learn and to be the best guardian for your donkey, that is gonna transcend and that is gonna allow you to get to the Donkey Welfare Symposium. You're gonna, meet somebody it opens up this world of like more possibilities i think that's and that might get a little a little weird but i think it's i think i really do think it's true so let's see i did that example part my my intention is often to be of good service through supporting the owner and tending to the donkey the best way i can sometimes i come and all i can do is pet the donkey and we and I have to say we're coming back. I'm coming back again. So it's okay if everything is in smaller steps. With that in mind, let's say you're getting ready for the farrier. And to touch back on the reason why I'm really wanting to talk about our emotions and the energy that we're putting out is because by the time people call me and I show up, they haven't been able to find a farrier or they've had a very traumatic event. Donkeys are often like roped and thrown on the ground. I mean, I was just with a 34 year old donkey last week that a, a farrier hit her in the face with his rasp. Oh. Right, okay, and so right off the bat, the owner's nervous. She's like, oh God, and she doesn't want the donkey to misbehave. She doesn't want anybody to hurt him. And so there's just this level of anxiety and so I deal a lot with clients who are experiencing anxiety and that's why I feel like it's so important to be able to identify that and then consciously choose to start shifting that emotion. Um, so now, here you are, you got your farrier coming. Many donkeys are kind of shy. If they haven't really been handled a lot from babies and stuff, I meet a lot of relatively shy donkeys, especially BLM ones or maybe ones that haven't been handled that much. So I really, like if I show up to meet your donkey and it's like, oh God, somebody's here and there and it runs away, but yet she's like, but I can touch him, you know, he loves me. That is true. So you gotta start exposing your donkey. So I'm, I like the idea of a paddock party. <laughs> and You just kind of invite your friends over, meet your donkey, let them be loud and laugh. And you know, you don't wanna necessarily put them in the paddock with your donkey, but whatever you got to do, to start exposing your donkey to more people and let them kind of, I don't like that word, I don't know if I like the word desensitate, de desensitizing, because um, I don't want them to not be sensitive. I, so anyways, that's a word that gets used a lot and I'm not sure how I feel about it. But anyways, you just want to expose them. It boosts their confidence when more people and they, they start to go, oh, that person came by, it just gave me some treats and now it's gone and I'm, I'm you know, chilling and that's good. So I really encourage you to, if your donkey's really shy and afraid of people, you've got to bring people over and just start letting your donkey get exposed. Okay, you need to be able to halter the donkey and pick up all four hooves. And we're gonna talk about, if you don't quite know how to pick up a hoof, we're gonna talk about some of the resources that you can get for learning how to do that. Um, I like, so I like the donkey to be able to be haltered. I want them to be able to pick up all four hooves. And I like to be able to lay the lead rope over their neck without them freaking out. The lead rope needs to be able to fall on the ground near them. And they're not just gonna be super freaked out. Um, and you need to be comfortable moving around them. And again, you gotta just practice. And you're gonna practice and you're gonna have fun. If you're working with your donkey, and you know, it's like, ah, I don't like this anymore, and you just let them go and do it again later. At least that's, that's how I do it. Um, and if your donkey's really shy and hasn't been handled a lot, and, and you can 
some farriers are gonna think this is weird, but maybe not your donkey farrier, right? Because, and we're working like, so Ross is here, myself, there's several other farriers here, and we know more about donkeys now. And it is totally normal for me to come to a client's house and just do a meet and greet. And all I do is hang out, you know, we may or may not halter the donkey. I might look at the environment, we'll go through the feed room. I might handle the donkey, pet him, and then we make another um, appointment for, for, the, for the fairy care, depending on where the donkey's at in their confidence level. Okay, and here's another thing. Because I've heard too many stories about donkeys not being treated very well by farriers. Um, so your farrier, this, and you, you can gauge this, and you're the, you're the donkey's guardian, so you have to, you know, you, you are responsible for who comes in and ends up working on them. But at the same time, I don't want you to feel guilty if you've had a professional come and then it didn't turn out that good, okay? Don't, don't, don't let yourself, don't hold blame on yourself for that. But your farrier should be kind and thoughtful, they should be patient, they should be knowledgeable, and they should like donkeys. Like, if they don't enjoy a donkey, then they shouldn't really be working on them. I don't know why they would wanna do it anyways. Like, and um, times are changing. And that's really good because we're getting more awareness out there. Things like the Donkey Welfare Symposium, Facebook. Um, you, under no circumstance, have to tolerate a farrier that is mean to your donkey. Or if you're getting a bad vibe and the donkey's not liking it and they're being rough and maybe saying things like, oh, we better push them up against the wall. We're going to tie them up or we're going to do this. You, you're in charge. And if their intention isn't to be of excellent service to your donkey, then they, maybe they shouldn't be there. And if something's happening, don't, do not be afraid to tell them to stop and leave your property. And I think that's really important because I've met a lot of clients who said, I didn't know what to do. It was all happening so fast. And then, you know, he, he was like, it felt like he was in charge or she was in charge. And I don't want my clients or anybody to feel like that. If you're getting a bad vibe and someone's, you know, being, not being good to your donkey, tell them to get out. Don't be afraid to do that. Okay, so your resources. Where are you going to find stuff to work with your donkey? Because um, you're like, I don't know how to pick up their feet. I don't know what I'm doing. So Donkey Sanctuary has a lot of resources. So does the Donkey Welfare Symposium where you're at. We have a whole video library on Vimeo. Um, and the Donkey Sanctuary has a lot of videos as well. Um, I have a small library of like videos, but they're not totally specific to like shaping plans, which I want to kind of hang out with Ben more and try to get a little bit more of the idea of how we're going to shape. I know that I do shaping, but I've never really known what shaping was, if that, if that makes sense. And just stay hungry for more knowledge. So, so right off the bat, Donkey Sanctuary, Donkey Welfare Symposium, we're going to have videos to help train you on how to, uh, how to pick up your animal's hooves and how to put the halter on them. And, and, and again, there's a lot of different training methods. A lot, a lot of my clients use clicker training, and it's really cool. I, d I don't do it, but sometimes I do it with them. That's a really it's really cool. They, the donkeys seem to respond to it really well, and that's something that you can explore on your own. So yeah, remember just to have fun. Again, a lot of the people that I come to meet with their donkeys, they're, they're just emotions are escalated, and they're so full of anxiety. And did you get the donkey so you could just be worried all the time? Like, <laughs> no, you didn't. I mean, it happens, but that's not why you got it. So you got to remember that you're on this really fun adventure. And then these are, um, these are what are called affirmations or positive statements. And I like to use these with my clients when they're feeling anxious or afraid because you're like, yeah, Megan, OK, yeah, I'm just going to suddenly feel better when I was feeling really stressed. How does that work? Well, it takes time. And again, the key word is conscious. You might not even realize that you were so worried until maybe I point it out and we start talking about it. And this is how you shift it with positive statements. 
So let's say you're, you're feeling afraid. You go, oh, so I am confident. I'm so confident. You know, and then you imagine what that would feel like to be confident. And you would say, well, that makes, I feel empowered, you know, because I'm searching out information. And uh, so those might seem really silly, but I really like them. In fact, would you guys say that with me? Yeah. I am confident. <laughs> Feeling empowered. <laughs> yeah. I am, committed I am committed to helping my donkey, helping my donkey. live their best life. <laughs> right? And do you notice how it makes, we're giggling and stuff? Just saying that can shift stuff. It doesn't mean that you're not going to feel afraid again. It doesn't mean that you're not going to get worried about your donkey, but it, it can help you shift those emotions. And then when you come to this place, donkeys are going to be more likely to want to be around you and stuff. They're going to think, oh, that, my, my human's feeling really good right now. This is nice. So just remember to have fun. Okay, this is my friend Don Quixote. <laughs> and I can't, okay, that's right. So this, hopefully it's gonna play. So I have so many different videos and I kinda just didn't quite know what to, to put up there for everybody, but he kept trying to bite me, <laughs> okay? And he's a jack. Every time I go down and touch his feet, he'd spin his little head around bite me. I was like, you stinker. Like, what are you doing? And so, I, anytime an animal's being mouthy or wanting to get at me, the last thing I, you ever want to do is come in and like hit them in the face or be like, no. Or, I feel like then you kind of put energy on that. So what I want you to see here is um, I took my nippers <laughs> and I was like, oh, whatever. And I put my nippers out. Like, I'm holding them back like this and I went down to pick his foot up and guess what he did? He turned his head around to bite me and hit my nippers. But I didn't bump him. He bumped into my stuff and I just kept going. And you know what he did? He went, oh, that I didn't like that. But then I was just like, whatever, you know. I just totally, it was, so this is like redirecting or what I call ignoring. And again, I'm not a trainer. I make all this stuff up. Oh, we don't have any sound. That's okay. Oh, there's no sound, huh? That's okay. You'll see it. You don't necessarily have to hear it. Plus, my voice is... That's okay. okay is that, can you hear it at all? Did I what? Yeah, here it is. So I put my nippers. Did you guys see that? Okay. And then I just, I like was like, oh, I, I pretended like I didn't even know what happened. And then I'm just trimming it. We're going to, I don't trim very long there, but. And I'm working with one hand, holding his foot. He's not ready for the foot between his legs, but I, you can see that I'm working with him with the rope laid over his neck. And his mom is doing really great work with him, so she practices. This is gonna pause. Do you see what I have there? That is a soft rope looped on the pattern of his back foot. I absolutely never restrain an animal. I would never tie their leg up. I don't tie donkeys to fences and stuff. And I'm not saying that tying them up is a bad thing when they, when they can stand comfortably, but um, that what he's doing is he was just kicking back. And, and my, it wasn't safe for me to be right there with him yet. So this is just like an extension of my arm. And I was able to just lightly hold his leg and he kind of went kick, kick. And I was like ignoring it. I'm like, oh, whatever you know, just kind of ignoring it. And he settled right down, relaxed, and then I picked up his, uh, we did not trim his hind feet this day, this day, but the second time I did. And uh, this was a really helpful, um, if you know how to do it, it can be really helpful. You couldn't touch it. Yeah, this is Don Quixote's mom's right here. She said you couldn't touch his, couldn't touch his legs, his hind legs.
Yeah. Yeah, because the second time I came back, not only was I picking, we were picking up his back legs, he was, she's like, what, you pulling a tire around and doing all this stuff? You've been having a lot of fun with him. <laughs> so, and he is such a good donkey. And with the wrong person trying to work with him, they could have gotten a massive fight with him, could have set him way back when all he needed was just a little bit more time. It is totally fine to trim the front feet and come back and trim the hind feet another time. And you know what else is totally fine? To come and trim the front feet and then come back and trim the front feet and maybe not get to the hinds yet. If they're not too distorted. If you're in my abnormal hoof talk, sometimes we need to, if they're in a really bad way, then we may need to consider like a medical restraint simply to address the, the, the problem right away. So anyways, he's, he's a lot of fun. Oh. Oh, he's so sorry. I'm like, oh, look at him. Um, and I did. I gave him a hug and stuff because he was such a good boy that day. And this is how we ended the session. I end up taking off his halter, telling him he's a good boy. And his mom did a bunch of homework. And we're, oh, look, th this happened on the other one, too. <laughs> OK, so we address that. We think about, um, we think about what who we're being with our donkeys. We need to be conscious of our emotions and try to shift them when we know we're feeling a little wacky or scared. And, and that's gonna help you handle your donkey so that they can be happy with the farrier, happy with getting things done to them. And then the, the next part about healthy hooves and having a happy donkey is that we feed them properly. And I am a recovering super obese donkey owner. I, no, I'm serious. Like, I've been a donkey farrier for a long time, but I did not know how to manage donkey's weight, and I had two donkeys that were extremely obese, and it wasn't until I met Eric and Cindy that I started to learn how to better manage them, and they have lost a lot of weight and are in a much better place but there's some lasting effects, like the, some of the fat pads aren't gonna go away completely. And you know, so I wanna tell you guys that because um, it can be difficult to, to get a donkey to lose weight. And I don't want you to think that you've done something so terrible if you, if you have a fat donkey, you know, like a lot of the times we just don't know. But we're starting to know now. And once you know though, dang it, then you kinda like, are, you, you have to do something about it. So, but you do it in like little phases. Okay, so this is, I talked about this earlier. I wanna remove sugars and process feed whenever I can. And we're gonna say that this isn't necessarily for an old or an emaciated or extremely thin donkey. I would suggest that you work with a veterinarian if you've got a really, if a donkey that needs to gain weight. But for the most part, the donkeys I see are fat or fatter and then there's a few <laughs> that are <laughs> then, yeah and there and there's a few that are in pretty good body condition but um, a lot of the times we we really need to focus on removing sugars and processed feed and this is where that species appropriate um, concept comes in and then we know through the donkey well uh, welfare symposium and then through the donkey sanctuary that uh, we can feed straw to donkeys now, I had a client of mine send his ranch hand down to get straw, and then the feed store called back and tattled on him and said, your ranch hand's down here trying to feed straw to your donkeys. What's going on? So I know it can be very hard, first of all, to find, and then when you tell somebody you're feeding straw, they think you're out of your mind. But um, we do know that they can eat it. And then with that, we would do like a low sugar, low carb grass hay, ideally. Um, and then again, mineral balancing. Um, sometimes we need to test water. That's, I threw that in there, but it might be a little too in depth. And then um, the other thing that donkeys need is companionship and freedom of movement. And then there are some habitat and like enrichment things that you can do. So let's go. Here's this is my favorite one. What's there to eat in the desert? Ice cream. <laughs> well, who said not much? So <laughs> Yeah, right? Do you know how far they have to walk and how hard? Like, and they're nibbling like little 
teeny, like if you see any of the videos of the wild burrows, they're just, you're like, uh, there's nothing there. And they look so good and they're so healthy. And these BLM burrows come in from the wild and their hooves are really pretty and nice. And then we get them and then we're like, what the heck, it's falling apart. So what they're doing out in the desert serves them. It serves them. They're moving many miles and there's not a whole lot to eat, so they gotta work hard to get. So that was the joke. Yeah, what's there to eat in the desert? Not much. <laughs> then they come, you know, they get domesticated, and we're like, oh, have all this to eat. I go out walking with my donkey along the levee, just like we used to do. I'm always walking with my donkey, searching for you. Let's take it again. I pedal steel. Walking with my donkey searching for you. 